I uh, stand before you today just simply to say that I am hopeful. I am uh, hopeful. I've never been more hopeful than I am uh, that I am now in my ministry in the past 15 years. I'm hopeful that this earpiece will stay on me uh, as I can finish, and maybe I'll end up just ho- holding it. Uh, I've never been more hopeful in the past 15 years than I am now, and I say that today because I speak to you as a, a husband to a beautiful wife. I speak to you as a, uh, a dad to four very unique children, and of recently, well, before I even wrote that biography, I speak to you as somebody, I gotta thank you so much, yeah, uh, I speak to you as somebody who uh, is also a grandfather to a beautiful grand baby that's three month old. And so my life is, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, and I keep them, my quick, my children quickly found out how much he means to me now because he's now the screensaver on my phone. So they're like, hey, what about us? Uh, yeah, what about you? Uh, so I, uh, I speak to you uh, today to say that I am hopeful. I speak to you as someone who understands what it feels like to have everything to do in the world, all the jobs to do and do it well with very little time, very little resource, and actually a very little understanding of what this world we live in is really all about. I speak to families of whatever they may look like. I speak to those who have diapers to change. I speak to those who have dogs to feed, recitals to go to, games to watch, to those whose lives are just full. And despite all those things, I am optimistic because what I believe that we have now is an opportunity. And what I'm learning in my own life is that now we have a great opportunity now in this new life, this new world that we live in. I flash back to a few years ago. I woke up uh, very overwhelmed, very overworked, very uh, full. I was hired on at a small United Methodist Church, as most, most Methodist churches are small hired on to do a simple job, just be the youth director. Okay. Uh, And so I took on the the role full-time to be a youth director, but as in many small churches, I found myself that that job description began to add up and add up. I quickly began overseeing children's ministry, and then I, well, you do oversee children's ministry, just oversee our nursery, and then, will you do that? Well, just answer the phones or just sit in the office, or uh, now we have a bus, a brand new bus. Guess what? You're now you're in charge of the ministry that we do with that, and you do so well in serving, so let's make a community engagement, and you can now oversee the community engagement in our community, uh, and then you do that well. We want to start involving you in some committee meetings that have nothing to do with you, but we want you to be in those committee meetings, and what I found myself doing is saying yes, 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 and my life was quickly out of control, quickly overwhelmed. I remember having these moments sitting in my office with all these things to do and literally having panic attacks. I had this expectation to do my job and do it with excellence, but when I turned around, there was very little support. And that family that I speak of, I, I remember very, very vividly walking in the house with all these things, my mind racing and, and going in different directions, passing by my children, walking to my room, not concerned with how their day was, not asking how they felt, not asking how was school or where you, how's your life. I found myself uh, spending more time with staff, uh, on, on church staff, than my own wife. I had quickly abandoned the family that I had, that had supported me 100%, even if it costed them picking up all that they knew and moving across state. And in Texas, eight hours, and you're still across state. <laughs> my health began to, to crash. I, I remember my wife, it came to the point where she said, you're not breathing when you sleep. And so we went to the doctor, and I, I had spiraled. Uh, my, my weight went the wrong direction, as mo- a lot of us understand, and uh, my diabetes was out of control from stress eating and, and had these trouble sleeping and, and anxiety attacks and all these things just happening. It came to the point where I would drive up to this church building, and what was once supposed to be life-giving now caused moments of nauseousness because I did not want to go inside this building. 
And then when we do that hard thing, right, when we have to ask for help, I looked around and I saw leaders and pastors and teachers who were in the same boat or not far from it. And their only solutions were, okay, maybe it's time to, you know, go up the ladder and be a a local pastor. Maybe it's time to, to, (laughs) I knew something had to change. I knew something different had to happen. And so I needed to find a place where I could seek and, and ask for help. And so a good friend of mine, Michael, who was not uh, affiliated with, with my church, took me out to breakfast one day, and, and now we, we have these every week, every Thursday. And he took me out to breakfast and sat me down and was honest. And if you have friends that only tell you yes and you're doing a great job, you need new friends. And this friend of mine said, Gabe, you are heading down a dangerous path if you don't change something and change it now. And then he challenged me to say, well, maybe it's time to rethink how you lead. Maybe it's ch- time to re- reinvent yourself or rediscover the answer to who am I? And he was right. I needed to rediscover that calling, that thing that I, I felt that I was called to do that was help people encounter the God that was already active and working in their lives, I had to discover what, what is it that still moves me and what is it that still drives me. And so I had to be honest with myself, and I met with our staff and resigned from my position. I removed myself completely off of church staff. I took time away to go on the road, took a job that was not any kind of religious, but yet was the most uh, most uh, quality of conversation I could have ever had with God in driving all over the state. I devoted myself to spending time with my family, loving my kids and loving my wife. And what I discovered was this, is that, yeah, our world, well... My world is really different. But this shift, this thing that has changed is not calling me to quit my calling. And what I found was that I was beating my head against the wall and, and, and I was having these moments where I couldn't understand what what I was doing, and, 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 I, and I had to make this shift within my mind that maybe I needed to reinvent myself. Maybe I needed to dis- rediscover who I was and embrace who I was. And what I'm finding and what I'm discovering is that we are living in a new culture. We are living in a new world. But it's a new opportunity, a new opportunity to, to discover and, and a new d- opportunity to lead. And so I uh, loved my family for this season. I, I spent time with, with uh, new people who were pouring into me and pouring into my life. And, and, and I, st- I started this uh, today by saying that I am hopeful, and I am hopeful because the most important thing that I found in this time, in this season, was that this calling to lead should not call us to sacrifice the who am I. You see, because I'm still dad, and I'm still husband, and I'm still Hispanic, and I'm still a football fan, and I'm still a normal human being, and, and I knew that if change had to happen, I knew if, if, if I was going to continue to go back, and I did go back into this, this ministry life, that I had to do it different. You see, what I discovered is this, is that we live in a change culture where we once worshiped religiously every week, but those places are turning into institutions of the past. And what I found is that maybe our world does not need star quarterbacks anymore whose success of the team depends on how well the quarterback plays. But maybe, maybe I needed to be a leader who led from within. Maybe I needed uh, to be someone who not stood at the front of the crowd, 
but someone, someone who is within the middle of the community. And so a few weeks ago, I, a few months ago now, got a call about some pastoral changes going on, and, and uh, I was asked the question I, that it's time that you uh, lead a new church, start a new faith community. And init- my initial thought was immediately, oh no, not again. But this time around, I was different. This time around, I n- knew who I was. I knew the who am I. And instead of putting on my cape and going trying to save the day, I stepped back and I looked at the community all around me. And he immediately started empowering the people who were around me, started calling on them to use their gifts, use their abilities, use their leadership skills to come alongside me to dream, to wonder what this new community is, who we are, and how we can serve best in our community. Immediately began equipping those around me, immediately began resourcing those around me. And here's the most interesting that thing that I've, that I've found in this, in this journey is that the people around me were ready. And they were willing. As I reflect back over the years about the anxiety attacks and the moments of feeling that I had to accomplish my job well and excellent with very little support, most of that I put on myself. And church leadership had some help too. But... But I found that the community was ready because I was not the only one who felt like it was time to reinvent ourselves, to just create and discover a new type of leader, one who leads in community on a team. I don't have much in depth to tell you today, but what I hope and what I, my hope is for you is that you embrace who you are at, as well, at the same time, it, helping others around you embrace who they are. My hope is that you will lean into who you are and never let that be a, become a sacrifice. We have a new opportunity. And my hope is that you will put down your capes and pick up the hand of the people around you. We, together, will discover what it is, again, to do life-giving ministry. Thanks.